Hi, welcome to the Maya Tool Belt. This is Michael. Today we're going to talk about the rigid bind command, which is under the animation menu sets here. Animation, skin, bind skin, and we have three main binding options here, and we're going to talk about rigid bind, the last one. So before we do that, though, let's set up our scene. Now, binding a skeleton is your binding geometry to a skeletal rig for animation purposes. So we're going to create a simple setup for that. First I'll create a, a cylinder and in the options over here I'm going to get rid of the cap subdivisions decrease the axis subdivisions to around 8 just so it's a little bit less dense and easier to see and then I'm going to switch to my front view and use my joint tool which is under skeleton joint tool and we'll talk about that more later in a later video and in wireframe view here I'm going to just put some joints down in no particular order I'm just going to center this cylinder I made at the pivot there so now the skeleton of joints is running right through the middle of the cylinder now one thing before we get started on binding is look at the cylinder right now the cylinder has no divisions going horizontal through the span of the cylinder so it can't deform without the geometry there to allow it to deform so I'm going to create I'm going to select the cylinder I should say and I'm going to increase the subdivisions height instead of having just one which is what we're seeing here, just one big span. I'm going to increase that a bit by just middle clicking and dragging in the scene. Just give it some good density. Now let's just pretend that this is a character's leg or arm or something. And obviously you would want to model your your leg and arm to look like one, but for the sake of uh, just showing this tool, we're just going to use this cylinder like this. All right. So back over here, I'm going to break off this menu by clicking this uh, dotted line here. In rigid bind, and let's go ahead and look at the options while we're here. So we got a few options. I'm going to go to Edit, Reset Settings, make sure we're at our default options right now. So you'll see we have Bind 2, and we have a drop-down menu for a couple options. Coloring and Bind Method are our main three options bind to and by default it's complete skeleton coloring by default is checked off and then bind method is at the closest point as opposed to partition set so first let's just use our default settings and here's how you bind a piece of geometry to a skeleton I'm going to select my geometry select my uh, cylinder hold down shift and now I'm going to click the skeleton's root joint. Now the root is the very first joint I placed and you can tell it's the root joint because when you select it all the other joints are also selected. If I were to select this joint you can see that these two joints here are not selected and when I move this joint only it moves along with whatever joint is parented to it. You can see that better in the outliner. You can see that my joint one or my root joint down here is displayed and every other joint I made is parented to the one before it so joint 4 and we can rename these if you want and say let's say wrist let's pretend this is an arm joint 4 is the wrist wrist joint 3 is I don't know forearm and these aren't exactly <laughs> anatomically placed joint 2 we'll say is the elbow and joint 1 shoulder Okay, so that makes that might help it make more sense to you. The wrist is attached to the forearm, which is attached to the elbow, which is attached to the shoulder. So when you move the shoulder, you will move your elbow, forearm, and wrist. If you move your elbow, you won't move your shoulder, but you'll move the forearm and wrist, and so on. So, selecting my geometry, my cylinder one, and we'll go ahead and just call this arm. Hold down shift and select my shoulder joint. And with my default settings here, edit, reset, I'll hit apply. Now the geometry you can see, especially in wireframe, turned purple 
and or pink indicating that it is being affected by the skeleton we have selected so right now I have the wireframe uh, viewable which is why you can still see it here which is this button and one thing I like to do under your shading menu shading x-ray joints you can see that the geometry I can't see my skeleton right now because the geometry is covering it but there is an option here under shading x-ray joints my joints will be visible through my geometry which makes it easier to see them and also to select them so anyway I have I've got this now rigidly by bound if I select my shoulder joint I can move it you know, everything else moves I can rotate it everything rotates and elbow now here's where things will get interesting you can see how the binding has affected the geometry without those spans of, of uh, geometry through here these edge loops this would not bend so you can see how it bends right there on the edge loops that we've added and this is called rigid binding so it's rigid for a, per for a reason it's rigid in the sense that these points let's say th this row this row and this row have all been rigidly bound to the elbow joint so when the elbow joint moves this row this row and this row of points move along with it and this row right here below it doesn't move at all so it's rigid in that sense when we get to smooth bind you, by the name you can probably tell smooth bind means you'll get a bit smoother transition. We're on rigid bind right now though, so we're going to talk about rigid for now. Look forward to my smooth bind video in the future. And if you're in the future, go look for it. I'm sure it's there. So this is rigid binding in a nutshell, but we're going to look at the options and see what else we can do with this. We'll undo back before all of this. Okay no longer bound let's bring my options back up okay so a complete skeleton you notice that the geometry was bound to the complete skeleton in the sense that each joint moved a part of the geometry it was all taking effect another option here is selected joints so if by bind to selected joints this geometry will only bind to the joints that I select instead of so if I did select a shoulder for instance and hit apply when I rotate the shoulder the geometry reacts the same as it did before but now when I select the elbow the geometry is not bound to it at all and does not bend when I rotate or move that's because we've only bound to the selected joint which was the shoulder joint and it's the only one being affected let's undo that okay so next is force all now force all is a little bit of a different situation let me uh, create a new object let's create a sphere let's just say for example this is the hand or something it's out here a little bit further away it's a little bit of a different situation let's say uh, maybe not the hand maybe it's the head I don't know just use your imagination but you can see the skeleton is not actually within it. it. It's not touching it. Like the cylinder, the skeleton is going through the arm like your own body does. But in this, for the sphere, there's no joint within it. There's nothing inside it. It's up by itself over here in space. Now, by default, if I were to go back to complete skeleton, so I'm going to bind my sphere to my complete skeleton okay so I have this let's just hide the cylinder for now just to avoid confusion so I've moved my sphere up here above the skeleton nothing in it now just for the sake of this uh, example I'm going to delete the wrist forearm and elbow joints just so there's a bit more distance between the two so now that I have this space between the joint and the sphere let me show you what happens if I try to bind these together now. So I'm binding to the complete skeleton, hit apply.
nothing happens because there is a balance there is like a a, dist a maximum distance that a joint affects piece of geometry so by using the force all we can change this and again using force all to bind for the bind to method select the sphere shift select the joint and now hit apply and you can see that it will move with that joint so let me undo all that get back to our previous situation with the cylinder don't need a sphere anymore so select the joints you can see that if I you can also select multiple joints at once let me uh, expand this over here so before I just selected the geometry and the shoulder to bind to the complete skeleton or the selected joint you can also bind by holding down the control key and over here in the outliner you can select multiple joints so let's say I select the arm let's do this again arm hold control and click the shoulder and the elbow joints so I have both of those selected now binding to selected joints hit apply so now when I rotate the elbow the geometry is affected but for the forearm it's not so that's binding to selected joints so that's binding to the complete skeleton selected joints and forcing all next we have coloring coloring is all it really does is just give color options to your joints so if we select the cylinder shift select the, the shoulder color joints and I just complete skeleton doesn't really matter hit apply now you can see that my skeletal joints have these different colors undo that now bind method closest point is the default option and that's what we've been using there's also one called partition set and we're not really going to get into it for this video but I'll talk a little bit about it you can bind based on partition sets which you can create under the create sets partition right here what a partition is is a collection of sets and uh, and uh, once we get to talking about sets and partitions that'll make more sense and we'll, we can come back to this at that point and especially when we start getting into more advanced uh, character rigging options and tools but that's been rigid bind in a nutshell hope you learned a little bit please feel free to comment make suggestions for future tools and commands that I go over for the Maya tool belt really appreciate it like subscribe it's all a big help, and I'll talk to you later.